Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, if you were a fruit, which one would you be and why? Ooh, I'd be a banana. So you could eat Ooh. me slowly on the big screen there as you're trying is. to, like, you know, psych out your opponent in a tennis match while Zendaya looks on in a, in a, in a, cre- in a credulous uh, love triangle, a sultry one that gets you hot and steamy, not just because it's hot outside and you're playing tennis, because there's sexual tension. Ooh. That or a papaya. Ooh. How about you, Justin? Uh, man, I am so I've used my soundboard so little. I don't even remember where shit is now. Um, I'm just gonna close my soundboard out. It's useless yeah. to me now. How about <laughs> me? Uh, I look. Your answer. I don't know if there's uh, even an honest answer from me could could top that. That is a well thought out, um, extremely erotic answer from you. Yeah, and I thank you for that. You're welcome. For the record, Did you say I hate mango bananas. or papaya? I said papaya as a second. Papaya. Okay. I've been eating a lot of mango recently, so that's yeah. why I heard mango. Yeah. Uh, was your as your pee turned color? Is it supposed to? With a high mango content, yeah. Is it at least smell different? I didn't different? know that. No, I. That's asparagus, right? No, it's also mangoes. Really? Yeah. What if you eat a lot of asparagus and mangoes together? Ooh, that's crazy because you get like the whatever the asparagus smells like. Plus, there's like a scent of like rosemary. From the mango, that's there is kind of like a like an uh, an earthy herby uh, mm-hmm. uh, taste to a mango. I haven't been able to put my mm-hmm. finger on it, but rosemary. That I think that might be it. I think it's a bit of rosemary and a bit of mint. That might be it. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because I haven't tannins, had mango in a long the time. Are there too, you know. And then, <laughs> is, is that a fact? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they linger on the palate. They do. They linger okay. on the pea, the pea palate, the pea, the pea palate. Uh, <laughs> I'll say this, uh, asparagus, ain't no fucking around with that. Uh, no. When you, like, that, the joke, you know, you've seen it in movies, that, yeah. like, it's very real. Yeah. That is it's hyper real. Well, last last summer, uh, we got I got my grill, and we were doing grilled asparagus all the time. And I was like, oh, there's a notable difference. Is your house just, like, just rank of asparagus Notable pee? difference. <laughs> It's like, listen, Justin, you can't pee outside anymore while you're doing this because it's going to stink like piss. It keeps the raccoons away. (laughs) It keeps a lot of things away. But oddly enough, a lot of things away. Oddly enough, it attracts uh, MAGA conservatives for some reason. It just pulls into our property. (laughs) They're drawn to the smell, you know. They venture in from like, all the farmland they, they around come Grand in, Rapids, and yeah. kind of they kind of come in. There's a bit of rage, but also just like just a bit of like catnip, you know, curiosity about them. So like, what's going on in here, buddy? You know, buddy. like <laughs> is there trouble back here? So wait, you don't help. like you don't like bananas? No, I don't. I don't think I, I, I don't knew like that about them. You. I here's I like them. I don't like them just straight up because I don't like. So the if texture. I handed you a banana. And I said, peel this and eat it. You would, Dude, that would not I be a tried, task you would enjoy. I tried since I've been on my health kick because what I do is I, I cut them up and I freeze them and I put them in my smoothies every morning and they're sure. blended in with everything else because it Absolutely. gives it like a ice cream like quality when they're frozen like that. And when I do smoothies, I put bananas in mine too. It's the, it, that is the key to me. That's yes. the key element. Yeah. Yeah. A banana has to be a, uh, um, a, a side character and he has okay. to be like the keyboard player in the band. Like it cannot be front and center lead guitar solo or massive vocalist. I just, I don't, I don't particularly enjoy the flavor. I can tolerate it okay. as part of the ensemble. But so you would, would you be... eat a banana split? No, no. So, okay. So no banana, like not even the flavor of the ice cream with some chocolate sauce and everything would, that wouldn't cover it enough Because for it's it, it, the texture of the banana. I just can't do. It's just, it's. So it's another texture thing for you then. Like it an is. onion. Okay. Because I, I went, oh, man, I. I, I bought like a bunch of bananas when we went to Disney World a couple of years ago, like mm-hmm. to have as like a breakfast thing. I was like, I need to get this as part of like protein in the morning. And I remember like sure. opening them up and I was going, 
I just tried to like just chop my way through it. I got about a third of the way through and I was like, ah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got all these and I'm not even going to eat them. I hate this. It was awful. I hate this so much. That reminds me of an episode of Parks and Rec where they run Ron Swanson. uh, One of the characters is like, hey, you have a family now. You need to do something for your health. Just eat one of these like once a week. And he's like, fine, begrudgingly. And the end credit scene over the credit, the tag of the episode is him sitting at his desk, staring at it and like trying to eat it. And it's a whole sequence of him trying different ways of eating it. And finally he takes a big burger, puts it on the (laughs) burger, smashes it, takes a bite and is like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like that I can, can work. Maybe a sweetness yeah. in there with the with the burger. Sure. Yeah. I could see that. Again, <laughs> part of the ensemble, not the main character. Not the main character. Cannot be the main character. Okay. I, I I'm lear- I, all these years knowing you, and I'm still learning things about you. I I'm still realize- learning things about myself, Justin. You know. <laughs> I didn't realize that bananas could register the stuff is stupid, stuff is dumb. Doug hates stuff. I, I think you're out of line playing that. Because I don't, I don't hate bananas. I just, I, because if anything, when I was a, a baby and I was eating foods, like I, I would, my mom and dad would take me to uh, a restaurant or a buffet and they would mm-hmm. have to get me a banana immediately or I would scream. I would scream nonstop until I so got So you a banana. demanded bananas when demanded you were a baby. Demanded bananas. And then I got to a point where I was younger. I was like, I just don't like the texture of this. Didn't touch them for decades. Yeah. Refused them outright. And then... As I started trying to eat healthier and I found like this, you know, these smoothies and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, I'll fucking try it. And I was like, okay, I can deal with the flavor. I don't like the texture. So I don't hate bananas. I just don't enjoy the texture of it. You are we're way out of line. You are so compl- you are so unbelievably complicated when it comes to food. Like you- <laughs> it's almost it's ex- as if I'm a human exa- being with, with a exhausting. lot of different a lot of different shades of my personality, Justin. But there's it's almost so as many if I'm rules not, to what you will I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not just a, a binary guy, Justin. I'm I, I'm not this or that. Like you know, I'm a not lot trying of, to make you that. I'm you know just what I saying. am? I'm like an onion. I have layers. Okay. Don't you dare! You are not allowed to. You're not allowed to claim those even in metaphors. Hey, did you know I had shallots the other day? Were in, you in awake? A, in, did a, someone... in a recipe, I, I bought them and begrudgingly, Justin. I touched them and I was like, I don't know if I should be doing this. But the, you're gonna have to walk me a, through how this went down. I, I found a and new why? recipe. It was a chicken sausage ragu, All and right. it called for shallots with some garlic. And the mm-hmm. whole point was that you cook them down and then you deglaze the pan with some wine. And I was like, Listen, I've seen this on a lot of cooking shows. So two things that you don't normally. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I put wine in like a, a stew sauce that I make, red wine okay. and things like that. So, but I was like, Listen. There's science behind this, you know, it's like the mirepoix, you know, like the onions, the carrots, the celery, like that's, those are like the building blocks. I'm like, there's a reason why. And most of the time when I see that stuff as, as it goes through, I'm like, I can chop this shit up really fine. Sure. I can chop it up real small, dice it up. I can mince this garlic. I can mince it. Or there's this uh, onion. Yeah. Yeah. I I minced the shallots real fine, threw it with some garlic and I cooked it down. Threw okay. in some, actually, I got some turkey sausage, put that in there, deglazed it, cooked it down. Didn't even fucking know the shallots were in there. Had no idea. You know? Remind me with the onion. Is it is it a flavor thing or a texture thing? It's a texture it thing. Texture. I don't it mind is. the smell of onions. I don't mind the flavor. It's a texture. It's the, it's the, I know everyone's like, you know, raw onions. I get it. You know, it's got that crunch and it's like very, again, front and center. They're like, ah, just have some grilled onions. I don't particularly like grilled onions either. Um, there's um there's a fibrousness to them that I just don't enjoy. Right. Um, but if there's something, if if you're making something like a soup, mm-hmm. and you're puree or blending everything, and there's there's like a whole onion in there, it's fine as long as everything is is in liquid form. I make a uh, roasted tomato soup that has uh, onions. It has you know garlic. It has tomatoes and like all this other shit. Okay. And I blend it all together and strain it, and it's fucking delicious. Like and that's where, that's where I'm on board. Like I don't okay. like a chunky sauce. Like <clears throat> blend it. I want a smooth sauce. So I'll get the flavors without the texture. So that's just that's just how okay. I am. I'm trying. Where I'm trying to include tomatoes? that stuff in, without you know without being an asshole. You know. Yeah. Where are you? Well, I mean, you're almost there. Where are you almost. on tomatoes? Uh, love the flavor. Don't like them like raw. I, I don't like them. I like it like I love a tomato sauce. Absolutely right, love but, a tomato sauce. But so again, chunky, chunks. 
Get the chunks out of there, man. Texture thing again? Yes. Very interesting. Okay. Interesting, I don't know. Annoying, sure. I, I was interesting, say, you know, for me being mm-hmm. being such a close friend of yours, I, I for some reason, I for some inexplicable reason, I find this mundane thing very interesting. Interesting for no one else listening to this podcast. So De- debate. All, I, I mean, you all. I our just Discord you all is it blows up all the time about yeah. Doug's diet. I mean, all <laughs> the time. There's there's the whole there's a whole channel that's dedicated to Doug's diet. Did you know? <laughs> Doug's you diet. can go to the link in the description and and check out our Discord. It's there. You can find it, as well as links to our Patreon and to our merch. And also, we uh, we 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 post these videos. If you're listening, good for you. Fucking thank you. Thank you for your patronage. And you can also check us out on YouTube as well. YouTube.com slash MindGap Podcast. We post our, our episodes there and all sorts of other shit. So, you know, while you're there, do us a favor. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll, we'll fucking love you forever. And That's hop right. in the Discord and, and chat with us. We'd love to hear from you. Every single one of you. I want to hear you. Say I it. I hear you. I want to hear your words. I want to read now. your words. Let, let us know what fruit would you want to be and why. Yeah, what fruit for me, would you for the want inside of you? Right now, it would be an orange for me. Hmm. Okay, why? I take it back. Watermelon. I'm in a watermelon phase. Beth just bought one for the first one of the season. And I'm like, I told her, I said, we need to make this a watermelon summer because I dig them. So every right summer, now it'd be watermelon. Every summer should be a watermelon summer as far as I'm concerned. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here All we right. go. Good. Oh, shit. I should probably have this pulled up, huh? All right. <laughs> uh, the sponsor is okay. not going to be happy. Oh, my bad, sponsor. Are you tired of mundane hobbies? Ready to add a dash of danger to your leisure time? Introducing Quentin's Animal Escape House. In this 90-minute waking nightmare, you'll be locked in an abandoned Victorian home with no working lights and dozens of feral animals who have all been equipped with knives. How do animals wield knives, you ask? That's a fantastic question, but we'd recommend spending less time asking questions and more time looking for a way out. Depending on your height and weight, you'll start off with either the attic or the basement, equipped only with a book of matches from a local Italian restaurant where everyone used to go to celebrate their grandparents' anniversary. Navigate Navigate your way through a labyrinth of darkened hallways and staircases that may or may not lead you right back to where you started, all while desperately trying to avoid any of our five varieties of wildcats who have previously been separated from their cubs. Find your way to the door, and you may be the first picture on our wall of fame. Visit quentinsanimalescapehouse.com to reserve your spot now. And as added out as an added bonus, if you enter the code MindGap at checkout, you'll receive a small air horn, which you can try using during your attempted escape. Fair warning, our resident brown bear hates loud noises. Quentin's Animal Escape House. Escape into fun. Ha-cha-cha-cha. You ever done an escape house, Doug? I've done an escape room. room. Yeah. Experience. Have you and, you did one of those? Yeah, I've done a couple of them. One of them, the first one I did was pretty depressing. It was uh oh, wait, wait it was, why? It was a Sherlock Holmes one. Okay. So it's like, great, do you want to feel stupid in this one room? Because <laughs> oh, get so ready. they made the really, really tough? It was like the intermediate one, but it was like yeah. a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't particularly enjoy. Now, I did another one that was like an escape from a prison, which was super cool. That's and fun. had multiple phased rooms to it and things like that. We almost Were you, did you start out like in a cell? Yeah, like we a, started out. Oh, in cells, that's fun. Okay. Which was really really cool. Um, so I think that kind of stuff is really really fun. And uh, as much as I hate to use this phrase as a good team building experience, um, it, it really like is. Um, I yeah. did I did that one for work and it was actually surprisingly fun. So I've I never do. done one, but I feel like I would enjoy it. You would until the math gets involved, and then oh, uh, you probably it. check out. You know. Yep. But uh, I would love to do one with you as well, because I just, you know, as we, you and I, the dummies that we are, try to figure figure out this stuff, we're just like, I don't get it. And I'm like, I'm just going to punch through this wall. That's what I'm good for, you know? <laughs> Doug, I'm bust throw yourself into that door really hard. Let's see what okay. happens. Okay, kabow! kabow! I did it. I broke us free. Escape! I broke the door you know? down. <laughs> Yeehaw! Um, yeah, go check it out, y'all. Fucking escape rooms for life. Woo! Uh, Justin. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You horny? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't believe you. No? That's not what a horny guy would say. I'm res- I'm respectable horny. Okay. D- like give me the difference. Okay, what's 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 disrespectful horny like for Justin to answer that question? What's disrespectful horny like? For, yeah. 
like drool. <sighs> like, I'm, oh, you're going to be disrespectful, Justin. I'm going to say, hey, you horny? <sighs> okay. That's the yeah. answer. Yeah, that's that's yeah. feral. <laughs> that's definitely yeah, feral. Yeah, right. Well, that's I mean, that's pretty disrespectful, I think. Yeah. Are yeah. you and then respectful? Are you horny? Yeah. yeah. I could fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could, I could, uh, I could smash. You know. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked. Are you hungry? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I could eat. Yeah. If you ask me, it's like Doug. You horny? I'm like, well, I don't know. What's the difference between a hamburger and a boner? <laughs> You're not giving me a hamburger right now. I don't. Okay. <laughs> see, I, th- Best I see your, you. <laughs> that's how that's how it works, though. You confused me into I'm like I'm in, I'm intrigued now. Mm-hmm. What about the boner? And yeah. so what now is, I'm now I'm it? engaged in it. You you reeled me in. That's well right. done. I see your. I see. See, Doug has game. That's the thing. I don't think yeah. a lot of people know. Doug Doug's got game. His game is just mass confusion and finally you just succumb to it i i disarm you with mass confusion and then yes. slip it in sideways that's how it goes you know <laughs> with consent yeah of with course consent again that is being respectful that's respectful horny i don't just slip it in sideways i get consent first gosh gang relax it's cool <laughs> but doug why do you ask uh no reason just want okay. to know if your uh, if your balls are feeling full. If your are your balls heavy right now? Okay. Anyway, uh, so got it. So proposed Silicon Valley <laughs> succession. <laughs> cool. This is where it's gonna go, huh? Uh, yeah. So um, have you seen this new movie Challengers? <laughs> Heard you, of it. Have not seen it. Did you go see it with Beth and then go home for a late night nightcap afterwards? We I, I saw it and then just all I wanted to do was play pickleball. <laughs> Because tennis is out of the question. I will tennis never play is, that. I will never again. It's too much. It's too much. The rackets are too big. The court's too big. Shrink everything down and make it. And, and give me a ping pong paddle and let's go and to make town. It, make it real hard to listen to people talk about it. And then now I'm now I'm into it. Pickleball is into CrossFit. You know? <laughs> oh my God, dude. That's the best analogy I think I've heard of it. Yes, it is. That is 100%. You pickleball? Yeah, dude. You, you pickleball? pickleball? Yeah. yeah. You pickleball, bro? Huh? You pickleball? It's like, so easy. You jugger? Huh? You <laughs> jugger, you asshole? Um, so anyway, this movie came out. Uh, it's so funny because... Um, what? When did I see this trailer? I think I saw that... I took Natalie to go see uh, Godzilla v. Kong. Oh, wow. Or whatever it was. It was Godzilla x Kong... King Kong, your balls, or whatever the newest one was. Oh, that's the one where they team up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they team up and they tag yeah. team. And um, the, Godzilla the, times Kong. This trailer played before that movie, and I was there with Natalie, and I was like, Blah. "What is this movie?" All righty then. <laughs> what is this movie? Yeah, I was like, "This is okie dokie." Um, also, before that movie was the uh, new Alien movie teaser, and I go, "Hey, kid, you're going to cover your eyes for this one. This one's." A little spooky. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen uh, the trailer for that yet. It's got the Prometheus uh, trailer uh, music playing, and uh, okay. yeah, there's. Uh, I'm like, yeah, just go ahead and close your eyes for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I've seen this one, but like Challenger's one, I'm like, oh Zendaya, cool, cool, cool. And I'm yeah. like, wait, wait, what? What? Oh, okay. Well, wait, this took a turn. Yeah, I was like, you know what this is about. So it's 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 my understanding is it's it's a love triangle yes. uh, between three tennis players, uh, two dudes, and Zendaya, and uh, Apparently it's pretty uh, pretty horny. It's a horny film. It's bringing some people are saying it's bringing the sexy steamy movies back, baby. And uh, uh, and you know, it's currently I sitting at eighty eight. I would say to anyone who's like these movies are back. Um, I want you to take a breath, maybe take a cold shower, and just all right, chill your tits. Because anyone who makes <laughs> predictions about this kind of stuff is typically wrong. So yeah, relax. <laughs> Predictions uh, about uh, about trends in films and and entertainment in general tend to end up very painful for the people making those predictions. It ends up being painful for the people who watch the people who make those movies about those predictions because they think you know like Barbie was successful. You, you've done Mattel's it again to like, me. Mattel's like, hey, they want more Mattel movies. We're gonna make more Mattel. They want a a Micro Machines movie. It's like no. No, I don't think. No one asked for that. I think yeah. you're missing. I think the the dollar bills <laughs> that are, you know, whispering to you are saying you can make more money if we do this. It's like it's not yeah. a formula. 
All right. There are some formulas to this to some extent, but it's not like, wow, this sexy movie did really well. I think people want more sexy movies. Let's yeah. make more sexy movies. It's like, relax, okay? I heard about this show Saltburn on Amazon Prime. Haven't seen it. I hear there's an impressive dong in it. Congrats. Um, but I'm like, I don't know. I I have no interest I like to, in, in seeing that stuff. The, these movies Saltburn nowadays one, yeah. are not my jam. Yeah. Saltburn was one that I actually do. I want to see that film because... Uh, I, I steered clear of it originally because of this of the same thing. I'm like, it, it's just going to be like the whole draw to it is how, you know, how sexualized can we like, I didn't think initially, I did not think it had any substance to it. And I was proved I, after speaking to many people and reading a bunch of reviews uh, was proved very wrong. So I feel like I do want to see this film because I have heard um, nothing but high praise for it. Um, and yes, it has a uh, killer dog. Uh, towards the end, from what I think I that's the character's name is Killer Dong. Killer Dong. <laughs> that's that's the new my, one. Is of my that favorite actors, domain? <laughs> Killer Killer Dong, is in it. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it, it is. There was one article that that I was looking at, and there I didn't realize how many because <clears throat> uh, back in the eighties, the eighties and nineties, there was there was a, there was Basic Instinct. There was mm. uh, Fatal body Attraction, heat. Officer and a Gentleman. Yeah, Body Heat, Disclosure, Eyed Wide Shut. Like these, the the idea of the horny movie was was definitely very prevalent. Um, when this article that we were looking at did kind of uh, list these out, uh, you know, no hard feelings, uh, anyone but you, uh, back on the strip, joyride, bottoms, salt burn. There's more than I realized uh, have been coming out, but I I think to say that this trend is back. I think is is jumping the gun a little bit. I don't know that. I don't know that we can say that that the the trend of horny movies is is back because I, I think a, a a lot of different reasons. But I think chiefly among them, I don't think that's how people get their kicks anymore. I don't think that is. I don't think that's that's not why a lot of people go to the cinema anymore because sex is so widely you know available just on the internet by itself yeah. it's you know just like out there you know and uh freely available and i you know in a time where you know porn was you know kind of tucked away in those dark corners of you know the towns you know the uh, sticky floored stores fronts uh where you get your magazines and your movie rentals and things like that where it was kind of hush hush and wasn't out and about you can compare that to like you know which is funny because there, there, there's a whole article uh, that uh, this feller, Stephen Follows, um, put together uh, where he, he is, is an article called uh, Why is Sex and Movies Declining? And he essentially like breaks down like a whole bunch of like data about what has declined as far as sex, why he thinks it may have declined and shows like a bunch of information. And um, there's a, a couple of really great things. One was like changes in audience taste. Meaning that like the younger generations, basically they look at sexuality differently than older generations. Yeah. Um, and I've heard that, that Gen Z as an, like you said, like as an entire generation has shifted away from that, like hypersexualized anything. Like it's yeah. like one of the, one of the least sexually charged generations from different articles that I've, that I have seen. Yeah. And you know, there's cultural norms. Right. Like, uh, how do you approach sex? You know, the idea of consent is a big deal. You mm-hmm. know, um, uh, you've got after the Me Too movement. I mean, that was a huge like right. there was there was a huge shift. And the uh, there's another statistic in here talking about the uh, role of the intimacy coordinator. Yes. On set and just how how that has blown up like pre 2000s. It was like near zero percent of any movies had that 2020. It started to rise, and by 2023, uh, you know, two percent of action movies had at least one intimacy coordinator. Um, of live action movies, had an intimacy coordinator on set. Like it is, it is wildly becoming a standard in the film industry now. And a lot of those people advocate for like, why do we like the, the job of the intimacy coordinator is to sit there and advocate for safety. F- first and foremost, is safety of the act, safety and comfort of the actors. 
Do you feel safe in what you're doing? Do you feel coerced into doing something you're not willing to do? You know, right. and keeping everyone on set safe and and that secondary to that, they go and they talk to uh, the director about like, if there's a gratuitous scene, they're like, okay, does this, does this add, does this add to the story? Do we need this? And is there another way that we can show this that maybe this and that? So there's a collaborative uh, advocacy on set from these people, which I would say probably has greatly led to the decrease in these in films. Yeah. Another one being like outdated stereotypes, the idea that like, you know, most of these, like gratuitous scenes were male focused and the idea of like, you know, for uh, the male gaze, for the, for the men, for the men's eyes. Right. And, um, and in general, like me personally, listen, when I was 14 years old, God bless these movies. Uh, the nineties was a good time to see some boobs. Um, in yeah. A lot of these scenes, yeah. You know, Terminator one, Linda Hamilton, you know, uh, Michael Bean, Love scene, got to see a little bit of boob. And I was like, this is awesome. This is a good day. I'm just going to watch Terminator a lot. You know, like this is pretty right. cool. Um, you look back on it now, you're like, wow. Desperate times. You know what I mean? Where you're like, look, a boob. <laughs> 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 look at that. He's touching a boob. It's, oh, boy. This is the best movie ever. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually. Well, you're in those formative years of, of just kind of awakening, you know. I rewatched that movie last fall and I found myself just skipping that scene. I'm like, we get it. We get it. You're fucking, right. I got it. Let's move this along. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's absolutely true. Like there's, if now we've hit that, and I don't know if it's because again, the taste in, in just in movies in general change or like we've become the curmudgeon, like, but it, if it doesn't further the story, I, I look for, I want good dialogue and I want a, a solid story that I can relate to. Like those are the two things that I'm that I'm really looking for. And if it doesn't move the story along, or if you're leaning on that, and that's the only reason for the film, I is it? A, I don't. I don't have time for that. I don't need that. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's like how editing techniques have evolved over time. You know, where we can make <laughs> logical leaps about a person getting from one part of, you know, an area to another. We don't have to actually see it happening. Otherwise we'd be like, how did they get there? They didn't show us exactly how that happened. I could see two people embrace, kiss each other passionately. A shirt comes off and then we fade to black. Right. We understand what's happening. You know, I don't need to see, you know, you know, <laughs> slowly with as, as like sexy saxophone plays and you see the panties coming off or whatever and what i mean even they even spoofed that stuff back in in the 90s what was that uh there was a um a, a spoof movie i think it was called was it loaded weapon one oh all those kind of like um yeah, yeah it like, was uh, like the, yeah it was a national lampoons film yep. and it basically made fun of lethal weapon and they even had a scene in that that was making fun of uh lethal weapon where uh emilio estevez is like walking in the moonlight okay. and you see his ass and they're like, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, Oh, nothing. Just taking a naked stroll in the night, you know, just like as, <laughs> as he's going, like his, apparently there's a scene where you see Mel Gibson's ass and lethal weapon. It's like, why are we doing this? Like, why is yeah. this here? It's, it's, it's apparent <clears throat> what's going on here. Like this doesn't add anything. This is, yeah. and, and th those are the things that I find, I think frustrating is when it's almost as if the filmmakers are like, ah, eh, guys, right. ladies, ah, eh, ah, eh, you get it. Yeah, you get it's, it. it's the, like it's a bad the, cameo or, you know, right. something like that where you're like, OK, fucking relax. it embodies the word gratuitous. Like yeah. that's it is it is just it's it's there for the sake of being there and for for no other reason to move the story forward. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I find it fascinating that, that that this is the case. And and I don't I don't care if these movies come back. It doesn't doesn't bother me at all or anything like that. It's, it's just it's not my cup. As of long as the story is long, as long as the story stays the main focus, like is, yeah. if it's a good story, like again, I misjudged Saltburn. Like I haven't seen it yet, but from everything that I've heard, I misjudged it as being one of these gratuitous, you know. But apparently, the story is really fucking solid. It paired that with the performances, and you you got a movie that works. And I'm going to assume the same thing for Challengers. I don't know that I'm the primary demographic to go see Challengers. I don't think yeah. I'm the eyeballs that they're chasing. But, you know, again, if it comes to streaming, I may check it out, but it's one of those, like, as long as the, if these, if Hollywood wants to get horny again, if the people making these, uh, predictions are in fact, right. All I hope is that the story doesn't suffer in order to bring back the, 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 the centralizing, uh, you know, the, the central scenes. Right. Because, um, 
you know, there are there are movies where like sex is almost integral to the story and the way that it's portrayed, you know, sure. and um, you know, I I talked to you, you know, in our production meeting about um, you know, the the movie History of Violence. Um, there's uncomfortably long sex scenes in that movie. There's two in particular, but they are very different from each other early on in the film versus later in the film, and it reflects the relationship between right. Um, the characters you know one is very loving and very you know titillating the other one is like angry you know and and uh and it reflects sort of like the relationship between the two characters and i was like looking back on it, i'm like actually that's kind of interesting and sort of reflecting on the relationship um that the progression that this is taking place but if it's just like hey here's some butts you know and whatever i'm like all right okay you know let's I don't, I don't need that. And, and again, this movie wasn't made for me and that's fine. Like I, sure. again, I've, I've gotten better with my time where I'm like, Oh, right. This wasn't, this isn't, this isn't made for Doug. This is made for somebody else. And that's okay. I, right. I'm, I'm happy that there's movies out there for other people, but I saw this trailer. And I'm like, I couldn't be less interested in seeing this film. Like I, nothing about this right. entices me. Um, this seems just not hundred percent, not my movie. So, but you know, it well, again, it sitting it's sitting at eighty percent of Rotten Tomatoes, so some there has to be something, something in the movie that that is not at least for us that is not uh, communicated in the trailer. Like, I, and, and I'm that assuming Zendaya sometimes. fucking rocks it because she's an incredible actor. Like I, I mean, think stellar. Yeah, she's just beyond amazing. So obviously, I think she probably has a, a big thing to do with that. I think almost anything she's in is excellent because she's just so fucking good and what she does yeah um so i'm sure that has a lot to do with it but like you know these other things i'm like i don't know it's just it's just it's just not something i'm into because sure. personally i've got the internet if i if i want to see something <laughs> i guess the the only upside is like maybe i'll get to see celebrity boobs you know what i mean like and celebrity butts you know like it's that's like I oh think- that's why if there's like a a, a leak so it hacks someone's phone and like oh i could see this person's actual body n- n- nude it's it's <laughs> forbidden fruit and people go crazy for it versus like well there's this chick who's doing wild stuff in this chat room you can you can go over there like yeah but that's not zendaya you know what i mean like people right, are right. like where can i find her boobs you know so right there is something well, that's yeah. kind of like exciting about that to some degree i'm sure yeah, I, that's. I mean, yes, I'll. I'll. Yes, uh, Justin. What movie from the eighties or nineties did you watch that had a sex scene that was very prolific for you? That is a good question. Uh, what movie from the eighties or nineties? I want to note how Justin is playing this off so cool, like he doesn't know, like he doesn't have tr- this in his back pocket, and I respect it. I think that's Titanic cool was one. He's playing respectful horny right now is what he's playing you know <laughs> titanic was one where if you had at, at, at any given point back in the day if you had pulled if you had taken the vhs and popped it in you could pretty much know what scene it was queued up to yeah <laughs> that, that that double vhs that it came in because it was such a long movie it needed two tapes oh that was another one uh, braveheart braveheart had uh had a, you know <laughs> boobs in it i mean it was kind there of a sex go. scene i was just like eh you know, but yeah. I was like, whoa, look at those boobs. Um, I mean, that's also, yeah, I agree with you. Back in those days, if you were uh, watching those scenes specifically and you had to remember, like, I need to either fast forward or rewind. Oh, rewind because past otherwise. The, past the point. Yeah. Otherwise, people are going to be like, wait a <clears throat> second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wait wait uh, a second. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> well, luckily, I was one of the only people, like, when when I when I was growing up, the house uh, I was with usually with my mom and uh, stepdad. That's the the primary house that I was in. I was they didn't watch a lot of movies, so I kind of had I never had to worry about that because it wasn't mm-hmm. like they were just like well, I'm going to watch Titanic. They had other things they were doing. So I like was, we finished I was, tape one on a tape was, two, and it's just like, hey, wait a second, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't re. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I, if if I found like if that was something we have that media when Natalie's older, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it about it at all. I'm if like, we somehow I regressed in the future, we regress to VHS eight VHS tapes. Just some sort of like whatever media you have where it's like, oh, I just turn on something that was paused. You know, sure, like, sure, sure, sure. And I'm yeah. just going to see that. I'm going to be like, it's cool. You know, uh, look, it, I get it, it is a part of growing up to be curious like that, and that's 100%. those. And again, at the time. Those movies were pretty much 
those scenes in movies were pretty much what you that was your that was your window to the world, right? Dude, That's what you had. Now the second it's we so got prolific. A computer with internet. The first thing I did was go to like playboy.com. Like that's the not knowing I did. that search history has existed. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Not at all. I went to hustler.com. I, w- I tried to, I just, I was so curious. I'm like, what, what can I find at these, yeah. at these websites? You know, like it. Sure. Yeah. I think yeah, that I changed, think, again, that changed talk- everything. <laughs> right. And I, well, look, and that's also, I think it's, it's worth, you know, and you and I've talked about that in the past. It's worth, it warrants a conversation. If you were to come across that, it warrants a conversation about healthy exploration reality versus what you see in the like yeah. i think that's one thing that we didn't necessarily get watching mm-hmm. those movies you don't grow up realizing that that is not reality like yeah. a lot of what's being portrayed is <laughs> yeah. just not how shit goes down you well, know what I'd, I mean? I'd argue that with most movies too like i, I know plenty of people who thought you tell me john wick is not reality <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's 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 more reality than most Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I'll tell you that much. Um, most more, more than most action movies in the 90s. Sure. Um, sure. But the idea that um, you know, like rom- romance movies, like uh, I used to get real frustrated growing up because people just thought, oh, this is how life is. Oh, sure. You know, yeah. My early yeah. relationships, people were like, oh, I have an idea of what romance is because I watched How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. <laughs> and it's like. Dude, the amount of big gestures that I made, like grand, like just Mm -hmm. and fell flat on my face because I thought because I had seen in the movie someone, you know, you stood outside the window with the boom box and that was Mm -hmm. like just dumb shit. And you're like, oh, okay, that's not that's not how this works. It's so imperative that people have these conversations with with your children when they're growing up. They're like, okay, you're at that stage now. Great. Let's discuss reality versus film well now i think it's even worse because it's like what's on social media that's portraying nothing right that's a fair point yeah yeah what what awful terrible things are people being like you know look at this promposal you know look at this oh god i mean promposals to gender reveals to you know engagements to wedding to i mean you name it right like everyone is it's what's the biggest most crazy thing that i can show and then if, if you don't get that then you're like well he didn't go out of his way or she didn't go out of her way for, you know, to, to ask me to this thing or like, yeah, it, it can be so demoralizing if you're like, Oh, maybe it wasn't, it wasn't as big as I've seen, you know? Cause I think also, and this just dawned on me is like what, what matters and makes those mo- moments magical in movies, aside from the fact that it's not real is the fact that those like profound moments are built up with a story with a relationship between these two unique sure. characters where that move of holding the boombox over your head makes sense in that universe. Right. That's not something you can then pull off in your own real life. If you, if the, the situations and the personalities don't match, you know, right. if it's like, you know, like, right. yeah. And yeah, I think that's, that's the lesson learned is like your relationship is unique. So yes. And it, yeah, you can't, you, yeah, that's a great, that's a really great point. Yeah. If I did that to Jill, a public display of affection like that, she'd fucking cut me with any knife she could find. Any right. sharp object, she'd throw it at me. She hates public displays of affection like that. Like any, I learned that like if, early you, if you hold her, will she hold hands or holding like, hands? Is that, fine, stuff okay. like that's totally cool. But if I were to, you know, in in college, uh, the uh, uh, there was a uh, the uh, if you were to do a flash mob, right? Flash mob. Oh my <laughs> god! If she had a nuke. If she was carrying the nuclear football. She'd punch in the codes and press the button immediately. She'd be like, "We're gonna end all of existence." Uh, there was a musical fraternity that was like full of like choir students and band students. And they, every year for Valentine's day, they would, you could like basically uh, submit a, a, a singing telegram from them and they would come oh, and find boy. whomever and they'd sing. And she, early on she goes, don't you ever fucking do that. If you do that, we are done. I do not want a bunch of guys <laughs> standing in front of the, the, the lunchroom <laughs> singing a song to me. Right. I would hate every second of that. Please don't do that. And I was like, noted. One percent of me was like, I wonder how much she'd hate it. You know, and I really wanted to maybe push that button, but I never did because I'm like, I get it. It'd probably be a nightmare if we did yeah. that. Um. So yeah, like so that's a perfect example of like me standing outside of her window with a boombox. She'd be like, What the fuck are you doing? Turn that right. off. Like, don't do that. Do you re- do you remember when we 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 wanted to do? Uh, I think we were at assignment desk. We were trying to plan out. The failed proposal flash mob. Do you oh, remember this? I think so. 
It's it was the, it was well. it was right at the time when flash mobs were kind of at their peak, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we we were we, I, I don't remember what if it was for the comedy troop thing that we were trying to mm-hmm. pull together or what, but it was the the idea was that we were going to get in Millennium Park we were going to have this guy and this girl uh, by the bean <clears throat> we're going to have them uh, he was going to get down on one knee. And do this big thing, and then we were gonna have dancers come in, and we were gonna have like it was gonna be a whole giant thing that he quote unquote put together, and then she was going to just turn it like flat out, turn it down, and walk away, and then he would be left standing there with all these like <sighs> these dancers who just got done like with their arms up and they're huffing, and there's like a sign out there, and then just yeah. watching the awkwardness of the crowd. And at the time, again, saying it now, it's just like that great, and then what? But at the yeah. time, we thought this was. <laughs> The peak of like, this is going to go so viral. Well, also at that time, I mean, the thing is like we've seen from the Internet now and social media like failed public proposals like mm-hmm. we've seen it like at basketball games. It's not. At, yes. Like, yeah. It's not unique now. It's it's totally something we've seen because right. of the success of social media at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Was it a really unique idea? I don't know. Probably not. But at this, you know, it was at least more fresh than, you know. Right. You know, than the it was Harlem in the shape, maybe- you know. <laughs> Us doing the Harlem Shake with a three-person office. Yeah, right. Wow, a whole lot changed in that scene from one cut to the other. You know, <laughs> it's just us working, people. and then it cuts to Doug just slapping the desk with an oatmeal cream pie box. And that's the only change. <laughs> Wearing his cream sickle, orange cream sickle <laughs> polo that doesn't really fit him. Saying we on TV, you know. Uh. <laughs> it's the good old days, you know. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so all that anyway. to say. Hey, if the horniness is back, cool. Um, I don't care either way. But long as it, I would, I, I would say, as long as it anyone, drives the story, that's yeah, it. that's all I'm I here want. for. It. That's all I want. Just good stories. You good know? stories. Tell me a good poor, story there, bro. Poor things was another one. That was that yeah. was all about. Uh, I didn't a realize coming uh, into her. Emma Stone just like you know went hog wild in that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and she was. I mean. I, they caught a lot of flack because you know they were like, well, you know, it's it's explo- uh, you know exploiting or or you know it's uh, the idea of this you know infantile brain in this woman's body and she's having sex is is it kind of this weird thing? And she was like, no, look, I was a producer on this film. If I didn't want that in there, I would have said something. I think it serves the story in this. And she actually defended it really fucking well. And I was like, all right, and I. Again, I watched it fucking great. It was a great movie. And again, but it served it served the story. It served the development of the character. And yeah. it wasn't in at least in my opinion, it wasn't like um it didn't ride that line of like, oh, I can watch this to get my jollies. Like it 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 was it was a set. It were sex scenes, but it wasn't anything like overtly like, oh yeah, you know. That's actually a good question. Are there have <laughs> Are there any sex scenes in movies or TV shows where you feel yourself like aroused? I don't find that very much, like anymore. Maybe historically, it's because my dick I'm is dying, sure yes, but, but I can't pick one out. You know, I've seen some where I'm like, I mean, I guess that's kind of hot, but I'm not like, oh boy, I'm so glad there's no one I else need, home right now. I'm gonna go watch this on my phone. Right, I upstairs. need to pause this. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, yeah, I, like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't. Again, I can't, none, none spring to mind. I'm sure, yeah. again, when I was younger, look, I watched Titanic specifically for reasons, right? Like when I was younger, yes, there was a reason. For watching that, those not, three yeah. guys go down with the ship playing the, their cello. I liked was, watching all those people lose their lives. I'm the guy that there's falls something and hits wrong the with propeller. Me. It was beautiful, you know? Absolutely, like just, yeah. The one that couldn't get out of the room. Ooh, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Uh, uh, chef's yeah, kiss. I, I think, I think That's because, a great question, yeah. yeah. Because I distinctly remember growing up, like, 100%. Mm-hmm. When I was a teenager, I was like, oh, my God. Like, <clears throat> there was I, some, oh, there was some uh, uh, parody movie that had Tia Carrera in it. And she just, like, she, she had her, like, she was, like, trying to uh, distract a guy by, like, putting her leg up on a stool and, like, show her leg. And I got, oh, like, t- yeah. s- super, like, oh, my God. Just from that, when I was a teenager, like <laughs> was, that was, he was like, oh, oh boy, I was like, yeah. oh my god, this woman's amazingly hot. And then you know, like as an adult now, I'm just like, I don't. Maybe it's just because you've seen stuff. I don't know. Well, when you're I was younger, say, I, I think that is. Uh, oh, tell me, it was jury duty. 
I don't think it was jury duty. I, okay, think I was just looking through her her uh, list of movies here, and I was like, I didn't remember she was in jury. What a what a what a movie. Um, <laughs> was <laughs> uh, was it in Aloha Scooby Doo? No. Okay. I, I don't one. think it was in Aloha Scooby Doo. Uh, yeah, I think I was going to say I think <clears throat> a lot of that too is uh, being de- like because of being desensitized. I think. Not not only because of uh, our age and and you know how much media we consume in this and that I think you know that is a thing for us but I think in general people are consuming so much and there is so much uh, just more blatant hardcore things out there from sex to uh, to violence to um, you know just people be like name it there's there's everything is amped up so much now and it's so accessible. I think there's a general desensitization to just everything anymore. Well, yeah, I think also it's just when I was younger, it was the um, imagining this thing that I hadn't experienced yet. So, well, right, I, I think that know. it speaks back to your it's it's you're desensitized to it now, where it's like that it, it, it takes more and more to to you know trigger the same thoughts or the same feelings, and that could be about anything. Like, look at how look how far we've come when we were younger. How much like a violent movie would affect us or a scary yeah. movie would affect right. us. And now you watch it and you're just like, cool. You know, like you're like, yeah. whatever. It, it's I think all of that, you know, no matter what category you're putting out there, I think that same that that the older you get, the more that you consume. But also the the again, the proliferation of just content now is is just desensitizing as a culture. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, uh, to some extent, again, that's just me. Where I don't know. I, I think back to it, and like, I, I I have fond memories of like watching these movies and being like, oh my god, you know, sure. and just envisioning, you know, my first sexual experience. Or it was whatever your formative like years. That. I mean, yeah, yeah. And then now I'm just like, yeah, it's that a was lady's during leg. your awakening period. Yeah, it's like, yeah, hey, the lady's got nice legs, but I'm gonna survive the rest of the day. I'll be okay. <laughs> You know, <laughs> this oh. isn't going to derail me. Yeah. This isn't going to stop me from doing work today. You know, like I'm going to be all right. I'm be like, yeah, it's an attractive woman with some nice legs. You know, that's cool. Like, I'll be all right. I'll move on. You know, to to have your day derailed, you would say, would not be a practical thing to do. Absolutely not. Be very right? impractical. It would be very impractical. And if we know one thing, Doug likes practicality. You got the questions. We got the answers. All you do is ask. Practical, 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 and ask them on air. You can have your question answered. I say on air as if we're on the radio, but on streaming, whatever you're watching or listening to this on. Uh, today, we're going to grab uh, an Ask Practical Doug from the Discord. We do a lot of Am I the Assholes. Uh, I jumped into the Discord and I really liked this because I just had this conversation not more than a month or so ago with someone and I really wanted even though you answered it briefly I want you to expound on these answers a little bit so okay uh from Mr. E and that's Emilio right is that yes okay yes so from Emilio he asks how much time should transpire between you saying you're leaving a gathering and actually leaving said gathering and then Seth put an addendum to that and he goes I want the Midwest versus the non-Midwest answers yes and this is a good question living in the Midwest Anyone who lives in the Midwest knows exactly why we're setting this up this way, because this is a very Midwest thing. So, Doug, yeah. please, uh, how much time? So I would say it depends. Like, are you in a are you at a gathering that you don't want to be at? Because okay. if that's the case, it can be very quick. You can basically be like, who are who's the main person I need to talk to? Or, or is there anyone? That sure. I need to. I, I can I just Irish goodbye this, you know, and say I'm going to the bathroom and then just leave and never, yeah. you know, never come back. 
Um, is this a place that's like, you know, you're having a really good time and it's like a wedding for like your best friend or a sibling that you like. I have to like qualify that. I feel like these days. Um, <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to call in for the night. So you want to go and, you know, sp- you know, go say goodbye to everyone and things like that. So that might be a little bit longer. That may be like a 10 to 15 minute, like sort of like work the room sure. and, uh, and see your way out. Uh, Midwest goodbyes. <sighs> Boy, I've been a part of those. Yep. I'd say uh, I, I put in the discord, um, I extend it by 100 to 200% um, <laughs> of what your classic thing is, because a lot of that turns into, you know, slapping the leg going, well, <sighs> you know, and then you just keep talking. <laughs> those those you know. moves that everyone knows. Yeah. And you start to like, you make it to the door, but then you just, you're still caught up in conversation. You're leaning mm-hmm. against the door, you know, to leave. And then like you walk out and then you're still talking just outside the door. And then maybe it, goes it continues in over to your car. Well, and, you know, and heaven forbid that there's been food because you'll end up, you'll, you'll be sitting, but then you'll go to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like you're taking plates to the kitchen and then you talk in the kitchen and then maybe or, there's some leftovers that you're taking home or you're, well, that's the thing is like maybe yeah. before you go, someone's like, wait, do you want some of the leftovers? Then you get pulled into the kitchen as they're yep. filling you up with leftovers to take Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. And you're yep. like, son of a bitch. And then and if then, it's winter time, oof. you get, you've got the, the dawning of the, the winter garb, right? Mm. So it's the boots, the coats, the hats, the scarves, the gloves, like all of that. And through the process, you might put the, the, the boots on and then you stand a little bit and you're like, wait, where were the coats? I'll go get them. And you get the yeah. coat. And then it's like, okay, now a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I, these days, uh, my exits are pretty quick. I don't. Have uh, you, do you have a, a way that you do it? Have you cracked a code on it? Well, for me, if share? it's like visiting, uh, like visiting family, uh, Jill's family because my family and I just going to say hang out. Um, which doesn't happen on yeah what I do for them is like while Jill is sort of like you know doing her goodbyes I load up the car and nice. I get everything so that's loaded, a pro I get move all that sort of stuff so that we're ready to go so then when I come back in I'm like cool well we're ready to go now so it doesn't delay it anymore you know uh-huh. like I've done the work to get us where we need to go and usually Jill and I are aligned for she's like once you go ahead and start loading up the car I'm like I'm on it boom 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 <laughs> I take care of everything I come in I'm like we're good to go yeah Vamanos, you know, let's, let's, let's beat it. You know, if it's, if I'm by myself, whew, boy, it's really easy for me to cut and run. Like, really? If I'm at I mean, a work event easier for, yeah. or something, because I'm just like, cool. I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, all right. Uh, later. And I just, I, I bolt. Do you say goodbye to everyone? Or do you I just say goodbye to people in like, the vicinity? Like, yeah. Thankfully, like at the last, uh, work, um, retreat that we did, um, they were very much normalizing like, Hey, you can leave at any time from Got any it. of these things. And that's love totally that cool. by the way. Yeah. And I loved it. Cause we went to a baseball game and I was like, I don't, I don't really want to go to this baseball game. This doesn't interest me at all because all I can think about is how much of a pain in the ass it's going to be to get out of the game sure. later. Yeah. Cause I'm like, all right, how long do I stay? And then I got to leave. And then my stuff is locked up in this uh, fucking bus and I got to go find the bus. And I got to get my stuff out. And then I got to call a fucking Uber. And I have to pick a time that's not like the end of the game when everyone's trying to get out of there because then it's be super fucking difficult to get an Uber and then get home. And I, you know, we had done stuff all day. We had um, this some food at this place. It was like at a brewery across the street. And they put us in this space. And it was so fucking loud, Justin. It was cacophonous. The, the acoustics were deafening. And like I was eating and I was just yeah. miserable. I felt myself just like sweating because it was like so much stimulation. And I was trying to talk to Jesus, some other people on my bad. team. And one of them, one of them literally just put her plate down. She goes, cool. I've, my, I, I've met my limit. I'm going home. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be very far behind you. That's great. <laughs> and uh, shortly That's thereafter, fantastic. like I saw my boss and she was doing the same thing. I was like, I, I'm, I'm going. I'm not even going to get to the game. Like I'm out of here. Like. Yeah. I got my stuff and I'm leaving. Yeah. I, I, I want to go home. <laughs> I love the fact that they, so, they yeah. didn't make it weird though. Like there are, there are it, it, so many times you've been at something where, where you try to be, Oh, you're going. Oh, you got, and you get that guilt trip. It, like I, it's, it's lovely that that team allowed the space for that to happen. That's really healthy. They understand that my team in particular, we are all introverts. So, um, which sure. some people may be like, Doug, you're not an introvert. I am in meaning that I expend a lot of energy to be social. 
And then once that energy runs out, I'm like, I got to fucking go. Like, I'm done. Right. Like, I don't right. feed off of that energy. I can to some degree, but in most of situations, I'm I'm looking for the exit, man. I'm like, how do I get out of here? Like, I want to go now. Yeah. When I don't have anyone else at my side, oh, boy, I go into survival mode. I'm fucking, you know, I I am one of those i can't think of anyone's name like those those survivalists i'm just like cool oh, like bear grills uh, the the i cut away from the herd <laughs> and i i go for the exit and i leave and i grab an uber and i'm like deuces and i'm out of there i don't i don't yeah it's easy for me to be like fuck this shit i'm out <laughs> i'm sorry i meant uh fuck this shit i'm out Mm-mm. yeah so i didn't know we had a sound drop for that that's fantastic I sure do yeah and great <laughs> Yeah, I used to think it was just my family when I was younger because, like, we would get for, on both sides. You know, like, uh, I, I was, I was, I never understood it. We'd be like, are we ready to go? And we would do that sequence of, you know, migrating as a pack, room to room, and still talking and still talking by the door and out to the. And I was like, I'm, and as a kid, I would get so bored. I'm like, oh my god, what are we fucking doing? Because I didn't have anything to say. Now as an yeah. adult, I have stuff to say so I can if it happens I can I can play along and I can play get it. But um yeah, I, I I very as I grew up figured out very quickly that I'm like, "Oh, this is not just my family. This is this is because of the region of the country that we live. It's a Midwest thing." Yeah, the, and the we, long goodbyes yeah. are are difficult. <laughs> very very difficult. Yeah. Well, so so I'm glad I could help. What is the how much time should transpire? I would say if you're by yourself and you don't want to be there, less than two two minutes. If it's in okay. a place you want to be, ten to fifteen minutes. And if it's uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's a Midwest, add a hundred to two hundred percent onto that time, possibly longer. There you go. Yeah. Practical this one. Yeah. Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? I am going to emphatically recommend The Fall Guy. Uh, I went, this is the first uh, movie I've gone back and seen, uh, new movie I've seen in theater in a little while, and uh, I loved it. Absolutely fucking loved it. I think in talking with with someone, I said, look, is it like Schindler's List? Is it going to make you go, whoa, that really hit deep? No, but it is everything that's fun about movies. Every single thing that is fun about movies is in this and it is it's just i ryan gosling is he's having a moment i think he's he's very similar to when ryan reynolds started Mm -hmm. to do deadpool and maximum effort marketing and like he just he found his pocket and like he just can't miss he's batting a thousand now i feel like gosling is is he's always been an incredible actor but he's having a different moment right now it's like the era of gosling where again this was just it was such a pleasure to watch i stayed until the end of the credits i was the last one in the in the theater and i just had this smile on my face and i in, like in my internal monologue i'm like i fucking i love movies this is just fun mm-hmm. I want, I want whatever that was. I just, I want to live in that. It was so fucking yeah. cool. Um, you know, it's, it's about filmmakers making a film too. So it's a little, you know, tongue yeah. in cheek nod Meta. to that industry. So you get a little behind the scenes look. Um, Emily Blunt is a fucking, she's having a moment too right now with Oppenheimer yeah. and then this. And so I just, yeah, it's, it's a great cast, a really fun thing. Uh, and it's just everything that makes movies fun to watch. I would really recommend the fall guy. Nice. Doug, what do you got? Uh, I'm going to recommend the We're Here to Help podcast with uh, Gareth Reynolds and Jake Johnson. Um, okay. You may know Jake Johnson from New Girl and, you know, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, Across the Spider-Verse, and a slew of other things. Um, tremendous improviser. Very funny guy. Uh, Gareth Reynolds, also comedian, improviser. Very funny. Um, they essentially literally take calls from people and they give them advice a lot of it's crazy advice um and they just basically try to help people with their problems and it's so entertaining um if you want to try it out i recommend episode 75 it's you are the danger is what it's called and that's a great one because what they'll do is they oftentimes will take calls from people and they'll say hey do us a favor give us a follow-up call to let us know how this goes you get the initial call and you also get the follow-up in that same episode Oh, and beautiful. 
Jake Johnson just does a wonderful job of just like, I don't know, man. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's very, very funny, like what he does in that. And uh, the right. two of them, the banter between Jake and Gareth is is very funny. They kind of they give each other shit a lot, and it's very funny to listen to them. So highly entertaining, uh, fun stuff. It's it's become uh, one of my new favorite podcasts out there that I really enjoy listening to. So I highly recommend it. I've seen clips of it on Instagram, and it it always seems very funny. So I will on this recommendation. I will I will add it and check it out. You should. It's very good. Um, so that's the show, gang. Uh, as always, uh, please, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash podcast, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you've already done that, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Can you hear me? Yeah, you can. I can hear you now. Yep. Cool. Uh, so thank you. Uh, if if you know you're in the world and you and you want to interact with us, leave us a comment. Tell us what what, what was what was the movie that got you horny growing up? Because we'd really like to know. What was the profound moment where you watched something? You're like, wow, this is a sexual awakening for me. Uh, leave us a comment there. Uh, also check the description for links to our Discord, links to our Patreon, links to our merch. And uh, yeah, check out. Also, follow us on all our social media at Mind Get Podcast and check out Justin online as well. On Instagram at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M I K E L. It's the fun way of spelling it while you're in the online realm. Any place where you can find and consume quality podcasts, you will find us. Share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things that we ask every week. A big one is sharing, though. Please let people know that we exist. It helps so much. And then 2EastEighth.com, 2EastEighth on all social media, loveandimprovfilm.com, loveandimprovfilm on Instagram. Hoo-ah! And with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, big thanks to you. And to all our listeners, to all our viewers, hope you're horny and have a dandy fucking week. Bye.